Okay, in today's lesson, we're going to discuss meiosis, the cellular basis of sexual reproduction. In the last unit, I discussed with you mitosis. So this one is for meiosis. Sexual reproduction depends on meiosis. A specialized process of cell division that takes place in animals produces gametes. Meiosis reduces the number of chromosomes, producing gametes with half the number of chromosomes present in the somatic cells. Somatic cells are all your body cells of a species. At fertilization, the nuclei of an egg and the sperm cell fuses, producing a cell called zygote, in which chromosome number typical of the species is restored without the halving of chromosomes number by meiotic division. Fertilization could double the number of chromosomes in each subsequent generation. So what happened is in meiosis, meiosis means to diminish. They reduce the number of chromosomes to the half in the body cells or the somatic cells and fertilization when um, uh, fertilization takes place, they form egg and sperm cell fuses to produce an zygote. Next is mechanism of meiosis. In human and other animals, meiosis takes place in primary reproductive organs. These are your gonades. Meiosis and mature gonades of the male are testes and produce spermatozoa or sperm, the gametes of the male. Meiosis and mature gonades of female, the ovaries, produces ova or eggs. These are the gametes of the female. So, in males, we have testes which produce sperm and in female, we have ovaries which produce ova or eggs. This process of production of gametes is known as gametogenesis. Meiosis is based on the interaction and distribution of homologous pairs of chromosomes. Homologous pair, they have the same gene arranged in the same order in the DNA of the chromosome. One chromosome of each homologous pair, the paternal chromosome comes from the male parent of the organism and the other chromosome is the maternal chromosome which comes from the female parent. Although genes of the two chromosomes of homologous pair are arranged in the same order, that's why they are known as homologous, the version of each gene called allele present in the num members of the pair may be the may be same or different so allele is which causes or produces variation let's look at how humans normally have 46 chromosomes in their diploid cells which consist of 22 homologous pairs and a pair of sex chromosomes <coughs> Each individual has a unique combination of allele in two chromosomes of each homologous pair. The distinct set of allele arising from the mixing mechanism of meiosis and fertilization give each individual his or her unique combination of inherited traits including such attributes like height, hair, eye color, susceptibility to certain diseases and even aspects of personality and intelligence. Meiosis separates homologous pairs, thereby reducing the diploid or 2n number of chromosomes to haploid or n number. Each gametes produce, produced by meiosis receive only one member of each homologous pair. For example, a human egg will produce an ovary or a sperm cell produced in testes contain 23 chromosomes, one of each pair. When the egg and sperm combines in sexual reproduction to produce zygote, the first cell of a new individual, the diploid number of 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs is regenerated. The process of DNA replication and meiotic cell division ensures that this diploid number is maintained in the body cells as the zygote develops. Meiotic cell cycle produces four genetically different daughter cells with half the per, uh, per, parental number of chromosomes. Meiosis follows the pre-mitotic interface in which DNA replicates and chromosomal proteins are duplicated. There are two steps of cell division in meiosis, which is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. 
in which duplicated chromosomes in the paternal cells are distributed to four daughter cells. The cycle of meiosis and fertilization in animals and human as an example. Meiosis in animals produces gametes, spermatozoa in testes of males and ova in ovaries of the female. Meiosis reduces the chromosome number of the from diploid level of two representatives of each chromosome to haploid level of one representative of each chromosome. Fertilization restores the chromosome number of diploid cells. If you try and remember this diagram, you will be able to produce everything which is written here. Me meiosis is based on interaction and distribution of the homologous chromosome pairs. So you'll be able to explain how and why. Next is production of four haploid nuclei by two meiotic division. For simplicity, just one pair of homologous pair is followed through the division. The maternal chromosome is red and the paternal chromosome is blue, a convention that is followed in other meiosis figures. Let's look at the figure. Step number one here, a diploid cell showing the two chromosome of each homologous pair. Each chromosome contain a single double-stranded DNA molecule. So here you can see two different homologous chromosome pairs. As a result of replication, each chromosome consists of two sister chromatid. Each sister chromatid contains a single double-stranded DNA molecule. While the homo... Okay, then chromosome sparing during prophase 1 of meiosis occurs. While the homologous uh, chromosomes are paired, chromosome segments of non-sister chromatid may exchange physical crossing over. Then they will follow first meiotic division and then second meiotic division. First meiotic division separates the homologous, uh, placing one in each of the two cells resulting from the division. These products have half the diploid number of chromosomes, but each chromosome still consists of two chromatids. Each of those chromatids contain a single double-stranded DNA molecule. Then we have second meiotic division. Second meiotic division separates the sister chromatid and one of the each of the one of each of the um, now daughter chromosomes is placed in each cell resulting from the division. Each daughter chromosome contain a single double stranded DNA molecule. This is the summary of how four haploid nuclei is produced by two mitotic division. Okay. Chromosome segregation uh, failure. Rarely chromosome segregation fails. That is, both chromosomes of homologous pair may connect to a kinetochore microtubule from the same spindle poles in meiosis 1. This will result in non-disjunction in which the spindle fails to separate the homologous chromosome. As a result, one pole will receive both chromosomes of the homologous pair whereas the other pole will receive no copies of chromosomes. Non-disjunction uh, non can also occur in meiosis 2. In the case, both chromatids of sister chromatids pair connect to the kinetochore microtubule from the same spindle pole. Non-disjunction in this case is produced um, uh, produces a similar result like one pole receives both sister chromatids as a daughter chromosomes, whereas the other receives no copies of that chromosome. Zygote that receives an extra chromosome because of the non-disjunction have three copies of one chromosome instead of two. In human, these kind of uh, zygotes um, don't last till the live birth. One exception is zygote that have three copies of chromosome 21 instead of normal two copies which develop into the individual with Down syndrome. So there's only one exception where there is three copies of chromosome on chromosome number 21 which will cause the Down syndrome in human. Now let's look at first meiotic division in detail. So number one is prophase one. In prophase one, step number one is condensation of chromosomes. At the beginning of prophase 1, the replicated chromosomes, each consisted of two identical sister chromatids, begin to condense into a thread-like structure. 
as in mitosis each pair of a sister chromatid is held together tightly by sister chromatid cohesion in which cohesion protein encircles the cycle chromatid along their length then still in prophase 1 synapses occurs two chromosomes of each homologous pairs comes together and line up uh, line up side by side in a zipper like way in process called synapses or pairing the tight association is facilitated by a protein framework called synaptomial complex when fully paired the homologues are called tetrad because each consists of four chromatid no equivalent of chromosome pair exists in mitosis then crossing over take place while they are paired the chromatid of homologous chromosomes exchange segments by crossing over in crossing over enzymes breaks and rejoin dna molecule of chromatid with great precision the site where crossing over has occurred become visible under the light microscope when chromosome condenses further as prophase 1 proceeds the sites are called crossover or chiasmata once crossing over is completed towards the end of prophase 1 the synaptonemal complex disassembles and disappears so what happened in prophase 1 condensation of chromosomes then synapses and crossing over then we move on to the prometaphase 1 by the end of prophase 1 a spindle has formed in the cytoplasm by the same mechanism discussed in the last unit at the start of prometaphase 1 the nuclear envelopes break down and the spindle moves into the former nuclear area kinetochore microtubules connect to chromosomes kinetochore microtubules from one pole attaches to the both sister kinetochores of one duplicated chromosomes and kinetochore microtubule from other pole attaches to the both sister kinetochores of the other duplicated chromosomes that is both sister chromatids of one homologue attaches to microtubule leading to one spindle pole whereas both sister chromatids of other homologue attaches to microtubules leading to the opposite pole non kinetochore microtubules from the two poles overlap in middle of the cell but do not attach to the chromosome this is your pro metaphase 1 then we have second mitotic division phase which is prophase 2 the chromosomes condenses and a spindle is formed Um, no, pro, after prometaphase 1, sorry, we have metaphase 1. Movement of kinetochores, microtubules align the tetrade in the equatorial plane. Meta means between. In the metaphase plate between the two spindle poles. Then we have anaphase 1. Anaphase 1 is triggered when the enzyme separates cleaves the cohesion ring just along the arm of the sister chromatid leaving sister chromatid cohesion in intact at the centromere region the two chromosomes of each homologous pair segregate and move to the opposite spindle poles the movement delivers one half the diploid number of chromosomes to each pole of the spindle however all the chromosomes at the poles are still double structures composed of the two sister chromatids then we have telophase 1. Telophase 1 is a brief transitory stage in which there is a little or no change in chromosomes except for limitation, limited con decondensation or unfolding in some species. New nuclear envelope form in some species but not in others. Telophase 1 is followed by interkinases in which the single spindle of the first meiotic division disassembles and the microtubule resembles into two new spindles for the second division then we have prophase one oh prophase two the chromosome condenses and form a spin uh, and a spindle is formed in prophase two then we have prometaphase two the nuclear envelopes break down and the spindle enters the former nuclear area 
kinetochore microtubules from the opposite spindle poles attached to the kinetochore of the each chromosome. Metaphase 2 movement of spindle microtubules align the chromosomes on the metaphase plate. Then we have anaphase 2 separates cleaves uh, separates cleaves the remaining cohesion proteins that are holding the pair of sister chromatids together in their centromere region. Kinetochore microtubules separate the two chromatids of each chromosome and move them towards the opposite spindle poles. At the completion of anaphase 2, the chromatids now called chromosomes have been segregated to the two poles. <laughs> Lastly, we have telophase 2. The chromosome began decondensing, eventually reaching the extended interphase state. The spindle dissembles the new nuclear envelope form around the masses of chromatin. Cytokinesis typically follows. The result is four haploid cells each with nucleus containing half the number of chromosomes present in G1, nucleus of the same species. So this is your meiosis. Difference between meiosis and mitosis. In prophase, meiosis prophase 1, homologous chromosome each consists of two sister chromatid pairs and the crossing over take place. In mitosis prophase, Homologous chromosomes each consist of two sister chromatids remain separate. Crossing over does not occur. Metaphase 1 of meiosis. Pairs of homologous chromosomes align at the metaphase plate. While in mitosis, chromosomes align individually at the metaphase plate. In meiosis, anaphase 1 and telophase, homologous chromosomes separate in anaphase 1 after the telophase 1. Each cell has one copy of each homologous chromosome pair, each consisting of two sister chromatid attached at the centromere. While in mitosis, anaphase and telophase, sister chromatid separates in anaphase, becoming daughter chromosomes in telophase, two diploid nuclear nuclei form. Cytokinesis produces the two daughter cells of mitosis, each of the which is genetically identical to the parent cells. Meiosis have phase 2. In meiosis phase 2, sister chromatid separates in anaphase 2 becoming daughter chromosomes. Telophase 2, 4 haploid nuclei form. Cytokinesis produce 4 haploid cells, each containing one half as many chromosomes as the parental cells. Each cell is genetically different from the parental cells and from each other. So this is the summary of difference between meiosis and mitosis. Sex chromosomes in meiosis. In many eukaryotes, including most animal, one or more pair of chromosomes are called sex chromosomes. In humans, the cell of female contain a pair of sex chromosomes is called XX pair. In males, male human contain a pair of sex chromosomes that consist of one X chromosome and a smaller Y chromosome. Developing into a male, in fact, is directly determined by the presence of Y chromosomes, some because of the gene it contains. In the absence of Y chromosomes, as in an XX individual, a female is produced. The two X chromosomes in female are fully homologous. In mammals, the X and Y chromosome in male and homologous to, uh, in males are homologous through a short region. This means that an X chromosome from the mother is able to pair up with either an X or a Y from the father and follows the same pathway through the meiotic division as other chromosome pairs. As a result of meiosis, gametes formed in a female and egg may receive either num member of the X pair, a gametes formed in a male receives either X or a Y chromosome. The sequence of the step into mitotic division accomplished a major outcome of meiosis the reduction of the chromosome's number and generation of genetic variability. Mechanism that generates the genetic variability. 
During meiosis and fertilization, genetic variability arises from three sources. Number one is crossing over between paired homologous chromosomes during prophase one, which recombines alleles of genes on a paired homologous chromosomes. Number two, the independent assortment of chromosomes segregated to poles during anaphase one, which recombines allele of gene on non-homologous chromosomes. And number three, the particular set of male and female gametes that unite in fertilization, which recombines the alleles of gene in the offspring of two parents. Let's look at the diagram. Recombination by crossing over. Number one, homologous chromosome pair. Each sister chromatid consists of a single double-stranded DNA molecules. The alleles of the two genes on one chromosome, red, are A and B. The alleles of those genes on the other chromosomes, blue, are small letter A and B. Step number two, crossing over occurs between homologous chromatid here between the two genes resulting in the exchange of a segment. So here you can see the segments are exchanged. Homologous chromosomes separate at the first meiotic division. After the meiosis two, two daughter chromosomes have paternal combinations of alleles A, B and A, B small. And as a result of crossing over, the other two daughter chromosomes are recombinant of the alleles A, B and A, B. When meiosis is completed, there are four nuclei. Two nuclei received unchanged chromatids with parental combination of alleles, and the two received chromosomes that have new combination of a allele, resulting from the crossing over. Genetics call the chromosomes with parental combination of alleles parental chromosomes, and the chromosome with new non-parental combination of allele recombinant chromosomes. Therefore, crossing over is mechanism of genetic recombination. It produces genetic recombinants, also called more simply recombinants. Independent assortment of maternal and paternal chromosomes is the second major source of genetic variability in meiosis. Recall that probe metaphase 1 is the stage of meiosis in which homologous pair of chromosomes attaches to the spindle pole. Maternal and paternal chromosome of each homolog pair typically carries different alleles of many of the genes on the chromosome. For each homologous pair, one chromosome makes spindle connection leading to the one pole and the other chromosome connect to the opposite pole. In making these connections, the orientation of one chromosome pair which uh, mem pair which members of the pair faces one pole and which faces the other has no influence on the orientation of any other chromosome pair. How chromosomes orient themselves when aligning along the metaphase plate is entirely random. As a result, any combination of chromosomes of maternal and paternal origin may segregate to the spindle pole. This is a phenomenon which is called independent assortment of a chromosome. The second meiotic division separates the chromatid containing these random combination to the gametes nuclei. This diagram here represents possible outcomes of the random spindle connection of three pairs of chromosomes at metaphase one of the meiosis. Random joining of male and female gametes in fertilization contributes to the additional variability among the individual. We said that because of the three reasons here, crossing over independent assortment and particular set of males and female ga uh, gametes um, combination or recombination cause the variability. A common exception in this is in humans, uh, In humans, we have identical twins, triplets, quadruplets, which arises not from the combination of identical gametes during fertilization, but from the mitotic division of a single fertilized egg into the separate cells that give rise to genetically identical individuals. 
then we have time and place of meiosis in organism organismal life cycles in animals and dip, uh, the diploid phase predominates the haploid phase is reduced and meiosis is followed directly by the gamete formation animal follows the pattern in which diploid phase predominates during the life cycle and haploid phase is reduced and meiosis is followed directly directly by the gamete formation in male animal each of the four nuclei produced by meiosis is enclosed in a separate cell by cytoplasmic division and each of the four cells differentiate into a functional sperm cell in female animals only one of the four nuclei become functional as an egg cell nucleus in plant and some fungi generation alternate between haploid and diploid phase they are both multicellular organism alternate between haploid and diploid generation in which depending on the organism either generation may dominate the life cycle and mitotic division occurs in both phases in the organism fertilization produces the diploid generation in which individuals are called sporophytes spora means seed and phyta mean plant after the sporophytes grow to maturity by mitotic division some of their cells undergo meiosis producing haploid genetically different reproductive cells called spores the spores are not gametes they germinate and grow differently directly by mitotic division into the generation of the haploid individual called gametophyte gameta mean gamete at maturity the nuclei of the some cells in gametophyte develop into cell or sperm nuclei all the egg or sperm nuclei produced by a particular gametophyte are genetically identical because they arises through mitosis meiosis does not occur in gametophyte fusion of the haploid egg and sperm nucleus produces a diploid zygote nucleus that divide by the mitosis to produce the diploid sporophyte generation again In some fungi and other organisms the haploid phase is dominant and the diploid phase is reduced to a single cell. During fertilization two haploid gametes fuses to form a diploid zygote nucleus. This nucleus immediately enters the meiosis producing four haploid cells. These cells develop directly or after one or more mitotic division into the haploid spores. These spores germinate to produce haploid individual. The gameto gametophytes, which grows or increase in number by mitotic division, eventually plus and minus making tetra form in these individuals by the differentiation of some of the uh, some of the cells produced by a mitotic division. Because the gametes ultimately are produced by my mitosis from a single ancestral haploid cell. all the gametes of an individuals are genetically identical the diagram represents a variation in time and place of meiosis in eukaryotes the diploid phase of the life cycle is shaded in blue and the haploid phase is shaded in yellow n is equal to the haploid number of chromosomes while 2n is the diploid number of chromosomes let's look at figure a is the animal life cycle diploid phase dominates the life cycle the haploid phase is reduced and the meiosis is followed directly by the gamete formation then all plants and fungi and algae fern shown relative length of two phases varies widely in plant generation alternate between haploid and diploid phases each of which is multicellular Number C is the other fungi and algae haploid phase is dominant and diploid phase is reduced to a single cell. Remember the sexual phases for gametophyte generation produces gametes or sex cells and the asexual phase or sporophyte generation produces spores asexually. In terms of chromosomes gametophyte is haploid and sporophyte is deployed this bring us to the end of this unit from this unit must remember these three diagrams mm.
how uh, our genetic variability arises these three key points must know the difference between meiosis and mitosis steps involved in meiosis and their description in detail what is down syndrome or uh, or chromosome segregation failure then how uh, how uh, four haploid cells produce two uh, are produced by two meiotic division must remember this diagram and uh, yeah that's all for the meiosis unit and there are no notes for these units all the points i have covered in the last unit for meiosis 2 um uh, for the revision purpose figure 11.2 and this uh, the pages in blue all the steps involved in meiosis must remember these thank you